Happy New Year, everyone! And what better way to start the new year than with a long-delayed review of the 1966 Western Stagecoach, starring Anne Margaret, Red Buttons, Mike Connors, Alex Scord, Bing Crosby, Bob Cummings, Van Heflin, Slim Pickens, Stephanie Powers, and Keenan Wynn. Now, as the movie starts, we find Crazy Horse and the Sioux attacking the cavalry. Meanwhile, in the local town, there's a fight between two army men over dance hall girl Dallas and Margaret, with the two men killing each other, while the boozy Doc Boone, Bing Crosby, looks on. Dallas and Doc Boone are both thrown out of town by Army e Captain Mallory and decide to leave on the stagecoach. They are joined by an embezzling banker, Bob Cummings, a whiskey salesman, Red Buttons, the pregnant wife of Captain Mallory, Stephanie Powers, and a gambler, Mike Connors, with the marshal, Van Heflin, joining the regular stagecoach driver, Slim Pickens, to go to Cheyenne. Now, due to the Sioux War Party, they are accompanied on the first part of the trip by a troop of cavalrymen. They run to escaped convict Ringo Kid, Alex Cord who joins them on their trip under the watchful eye of the marshal. Along the way, the group constantly argues on whether to keep going as they continue to hear about Crazy Horse's war party. Now, this is a movie that I enjoyed very much. I saw it originally for one reason and one reason only, Bing Crosby. As a fan of his films, this was one that I wanted to see. Now, for me personally, yeah, I, I think this movie is worth viewing for him alone as he provides a lot of the humor and does pretty well with the role. Although it does sad me that this ended up being his last theatrical movie as he pretty much made a complete switch to television after this, mainly doing his various TV specials. As to the rest of the cast, I'd say that my feelings are kind of mixed. Although for me, they do well enough to make the movie enjoyable. Now, Bob Cummings does great as a thieving banker who proves himself a continual jerk as he continues to insist on pushing forward in spite of the danger, even when the doctor says they shouldn't move on after Mrs. Mallory gives birth. Now, in spite of his brief appearance at the end, Keenan Wynn makes for a very despicable Luke Plummer, making it very easy for the audience to cheer for the Ringo Kid. Mike Connors as the gambler and Stephanie Powers as Mrs. Mallory really don't make much of an impact in their roles, but I feel they fare better than Alex Cord as the Ringo Kid. He does decently, but he has taken over the iconic role from John Wayne, who became a big star after appearing in the 1939 film. And quite frankly, Alex Cord just doesn't compare to him. Now, what this movie he does have in its favor is the improvements that came with time. This movie is in color and widescreen, allowing it is to see some wonderful scenery from the Colorado location shooting. This movie came out around the time that things were changing with the production code. Whether you like that or not, it's up to you. So they were able to show a little more, as evidenced by attacks by Crazy Horse and the Sioux. Although, quite frankly, the blood more or less looks quite fake, which is fine enough by me. I've seen... All three versions of Stagecoach, and this is the film I prefer. Is it perfect? No. But it's a fun ride just the same, and one I would recommend seeing. Now, getting back to why this review has been long delayed, I originally had planned to post it on March 3rd, 2019, after watching my copy of the out-of-print DVD from Twilight Time. However, before I could post it, Twilight Time announced an upgrade to uh, Blu-ray. And so I pulled the review until I could see the new Blu-ray and see how that looked. I've finally seen it now, and I can say that it is a definite improvement over their earlier DVD release. The picture just shines in high definition, allowing the beauty of the different locations to really shine. Of course, the color is great too, showing off the different costumes for the main cast. Easily recommended way to see this movie. The movie itself is 1 hour and 54 minutes in length. As I said, it's available on Blu-ray from Twilight Time as a limited edition with 3,000 total copies available, either through screenarchives.com or twilighttimemovies.com. Anyhow, that's all I have to say on this one, everybody. Thanks for listening, and I hope you'll keep coming back for more this year.